Amen. How many's glad you've been redeemed? Amen. Amen. Bought by price. Yes, Christ right. was that price that was paid. I thank the Lord for what He's done for me. I, I can spend the rest of my life thanking Him for the good things and how He's looked after me. Me and Petey was on the way to church, and sometimes we have weird conversations, but this come up, and I said, if I wouldn't pass, would we still be in church like we are now? Would we be there every service? Would we would we go every time? And we begin to talk. And whether I be the pastor or not, we come to the agreement. God's being good to us. Amen. Amen. Right. And we owe him Amen. more than we could ever repay. I my prayer is God let me be faithful. Amen. Let me be somebody that can be trusted. Right. Hey, listen to me. Hey, I'm here to tell you tonight, my prayer is God let me do what you want me to do. Right there. I love you tonight. I'm thrilled, Brother Wendell. Weaver is going to preach for us tonight. We're glad to have him with us. Lord laid him on my heart going out the back door. It's amazing how these preachers just, they love just to get out the back door right there. But we're glad to have Brother Wendell. Brother Wendell, you come on around and bring us the word God laid on your heart. Amen. Glad to preach. Bless you. That's your heart. You know, somebody said one time that uh, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result was the definition of insanity. And, uh, you know, I'm so glad that, that uh, there, there's a chance for us to all change who we are. Amen. And, uh, you know, I just want to say that uh, we got this pool in the backyard, and I was just sitting here thinking about that. And I remember swimming in that pool and it looking really good. Well, it hasn't been messed with for about two years now. And it's a mess. I mean, it is filthy. It's green. It has got junk all in it. There's frogs living in it. There's all kinds of stuff living in that pool. It's horrible. But you know what? We went out there, or Wendy went out there the other night, and they turned the pump on. And all of a sudden, some water started circulating through that old pump. And you know what? It's not fixed yet, but it's starting to clear up a little bit. And I'm so thankful, just like that pool in our lives, we might, we might have a lot of things going on. We might be really dirty. We might not like what we're doing right now. We might not like who we are. We might not like the things that's coming out of us right now. But if you'll just trust in God and you'll put them in, in your life and put them first in your life, then God can start to move that water in your soul and start circulating that bad out. It's not going to happen overnight, but you know what? You know, you know, God can fix the inside right away. But there's a lot of things. Sin has consequences. Sin causes things to happen in your life. It might take a minute to clean up. If you're expecting things to change right away, then you might have to be a little bit disappointed. But uh, God will start the process. And if you'll just start throwing the chemicals in there, and you'll start moving that water and circulating it, God will clean that pool up pretty soon. We're going to have a new pool. It's just going to take a little while. And... Uh, I don't know why I said all that, but I was just sitting there and I was thinking as Frankie was talking, you know, I'm, I'm so thankful that, uh, that God never gave up on me once. He never gave up on you. And he loves us all. We're all his children. And his desire is that you be his tonight. And if you're not his, I hope before you leave that you'll find him for yourself. And that through you, somebody else might find him because that's what it's all about. You know, we, we try to to say life is about so many different things. But you know what? It's just like tonight. I was sitting over there, and uh, Jacob and Brittany came over to pick Aubrey up. And we've had such a good weekend, you know, spending time with her. She, all she wants to do is come to church. That's all she wants to do. And uh, unless we bring her, she's not going to come. And, uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm faithful, and I'm, I'm believing that God's going to do something in her mom and daddy's life. And I was just thinking tonight... If we can just pray a little harder for those that are out there in the world. You know, I'm, I'm not judging them because I got no right to judge them. Because I've been right there where they're at. But if you'll just trust in God and keep believing, they'll come back. Yeah. They'll come back. God will find a way to make a way in their life for them to come back to church. Right. And uh, if you got somebody in your life that's, that's out there, lost. Maybe right. they just strayed away from God. If you'll just keep believing. <clears throat> I know they're coming back. We just got to keep praying. That's all we got to do. It's going to happen just like that pool. There's a lot of messes out there. And I'm looking forward to the day when my little niece gets saved 
I know it's going to happen. I'm putting her in God's hands because she's a precious little thing. Just like her little brother, Jace. They're precious. And just like all the little children around here, God's going to find something and he's going to do something in their life. And I, I can't wait to see it. And uh, like I said, I don't know why I'm saying all this tonight, but it's just been on my heart. What I want to talk to you about, if you want to turn it over in the Mark chapter 5, around about the 25th verse, it's really familiar scripture. And I promise I won't worry your patience tonight. If you know me, you know I'm not going to worry your patience. But I'm going to do exactly what, what God had had me to do. And then I'm going to sit down and let, the, let God take care of the rest. Um, anybody that knows me, I'm, I'm sure you all know, I'm really not much of a talker. You know, I, I kind of sit there and I don't really say a whole lot. It's something I'm praying about within myself. A lot of people think maybe I'm not that friendly, but I mean, I love people. I do. I just, I'm not very talkative. So I'm really trying to work on that within myself. And then I don't, why in the world God called me to preach? I don't know. Because if there was anybody else out there, I promise you they could do a better job than me. I know they could. But for some reason he did. I know he did. Because I tried to run away from it and I can't. And, uh, you know, so I'm here and I'm just going to do the very best I can. And uh, we'll, work on, we'll work on the rest. But if... Uh, You'll read with me in the 25th verse. It says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him around about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked around and about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that what was done in her came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of that plague. And that's all we're going to read today. Um, y'all, y'all pray with me. Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you for your many blessings. Lord, we thank you for how that you've been so good in our life already, Lord. God, we just pray for your spirit tonight, God. Lord, we just pray that you would come by, that you would help us to do the things that, that, that you have showed in our hearts, God. And Lord, we pray most of all, God, that if somebody's here tonight, Lord, that they don't know you, God, or they're not whole in their life, Lord, and they're, or they got issues going on in their life, God. Lord, we just pray that you would just be in the midst, God, that you would help them and raise them out of whatever trouble they might be in, God, and they might be whole with you again today, God. And Lord, I thank you for all things that you've done, and I thank you for all things that you're going to do. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we got this woman that's had the, wish, the issue of blood, and just doing a little reading and a little studying, you know, I found out this woman that's got the issue of blood, you know, back in that time, she's considered unclean. She's untouchable. She's an outcast from society. She's hemorrhaging blood. She had spent all she had trying to get rid of this issue of blood. And here came Jesus. And, and you know, she, she knew she had tried everything else. And she had heard about this man. That if she could just get close, that she could just get close enough to touch him, that something might happen to him. And I started thinking about this issue of blood. And I started studying up on blood and just thinking about what the blood does for the body. And just, just through my studies, and I'm talking about this blood that we got coursing through our veins. Blood does three things for us. It does three things that we can't live without. You know, there, there are some things you can live without. Like they can take out your tonsils and you'll be okay. You know, you can live without those. There are some organs in your body that they can take out. But if they take your blood out, you're done. If you lose too much blood, you're, it's over. It's, it's all done. But one thing that the blood does tonight is it regulates your body temperature. You ever been out there and you got really cold and you start shivering and things start just, you know how you just get cold? Well, I started thinking about over there where it says in Revelation where it said, I know your works and I know whether you're hot nor cold. And if you're lukewarm, I'd rather spew you out of your mouth. A lot of times in our lives, we want to be hot or we want to be, or we just want to ride that line. God said he'd rather be 
cold, then hot, then lukewarm, he'd spew, spew us out of his mouth. In other words, if, if we're hot, on fire for God, there's a lot that we can do. If we're cold, we're not in there making a mess. But a lot of us, and myself included, a lot of times we get in church, we, we halfway give our lives to God. We do a little bit for God, but we're not willing to take the whole plunge. You know, we're not willing to jump in the whole way. And just like your body, when it gets cold, you start constricting. And you just can't do anything. You start shaking. You, you start convulsing. Your veins start and you start shivering. You just can't function right. Just like you can in your life. When you've got God already in your life and you're not living for Him, all of a sudden your body it starts convulsing. It starts, it starts drawing up. You start shaking. You can't do the things that you need to do. You start having this need. You know, what's the one thing you want to do when you get really, really cold? What's the one thing that you could that more than anything you want to do. It takes over your mind. You can't think about anything else. I don't know if you've ever been out going hunting or something like that. You walked over. Yeah, I went hunting one time, deer hunting. It was cold. I walked all the way over there. I didn't know about all this little heated stuff that you could bring with you to warm you up. But yeah, I was sitting in that deer stand and my feet, I have never felt my, I thought they were going to fall off. They were so cold. The only, I didn't care if I saw a deer. I didn't care how, all I wanted to do was get down out of that stand and go to the truck and put the heat on so that I could get warm again. There's so many people out here tonight that just all they need is just a touch of God in their life. They're so cold. They're shaking and shivering and they're just pleading and needing God in their life. If we would just turn the heat on, you know, I mean, just get that blood flowing, get that pure life, just like with the woman that had the issue of blood. What did she say? If I can just but touch the hem of his garden garment, that I will be made whole. If you can just get close to Jesus and you can just get that touch from the Holy Ghost coming down in your life, if you can just trust in God and let him make your life whole, it's amazing what can happen. Amen. He'll take you from being cold and he'll warm you up right away. Just as I don't know if uh, you ever been just really, really cold and then you get warm. It's just you just want to just yeah. bask in it, don't you? I mean, it's just not, I, I'll turn the heat up all the way on the truck. And I don't like to be hot either sometimes. But when I when I've been cold, I'll put it on till I start sweating because I just want to get every ounce of it. But tonight, if God's not revealed himself to you and you're cold, if you'll just turn the heat on, just come right down here and turn the heat on and let God warm up your life. There's so much that he's got ready for you today. If you'll just trust in him, if you'll just trust in him. You know what the other thing that blood can do? It protects you. It protects you in a couple different ways. You got white blood cells that fight off infection, and you got red blood cells that do something else. But uh, you know, so a lot of times in our life we have things that come and they bombard us. They they try to try to attack us, and uh, you know, it's amazing to me how that God. Yeah, I'll go back and I'll tell you a personal story. I don't know, I've told you guys before that I had this disease that kind of crept up on me all of a sudden. And I, I don't know if anybody's ever been through anything like that, but uh, my body turned on itself, so to speak. My body started thinking, my body thought, when I went to the doctor, they drew, what, 10 vials of blood from me? They took all this blood out of me trying to figure out what was going on in my blood. But I was having these big forms of knots pop up on me, I had them on my lungs. I had them all over my body. But what it was is my body thought that there was something there and it was attacking it and building all these little granulomas that started building up and it started hurting because it was on the inside too. And you know, I had this issue within myself, this disease that was fighting me. And I, I, I for some reason, my body just wouldn't, wouldn't do right. It just was acting crazy. It was an overdrive. It was, a, it was so strong with white blood cells. It was just attacking itself and building and building. And you know what, tonight, I'm so glad that God delivered me from that. But not only that, if, if, you know, a lot of times we go to doctors and we think, and I love doctors, I got a great doctor. She's a great woman of God, my doctor is. And you know what, she, she, she's amazing. But I'm so glad that I got the great physician in my life. That when you got those issues in your blood, when you got things that come in your life that are trying to attack you from the outside, those fiery darts of the devil. I know Frankie Croto did this morning. The devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. 
He said, whom he may devour. I read over there in the Daniel with the lion's den where the lion laid down. He didn't touch him, did he? I'm so glad that God has dominion over that. Just like you were talking this morning, we get the little circle and the big circle. I'm so glad that my God's in the big circle. Uh, is your God in the big circle? Or you think your God's in the little circle? Maybe you're limiting God. But I promise you, God is much bigger than anything in our lives, anything that the devil can throw at us, anything that may come from the outside trying to attack you on the inside. God's bigger. He can take that thing just like my body turning on itself. God can take and he can reverse that process. It's amazing. They said I would never lose my scars. You can barely tell where they were now. They're almost completely gone. I, I just got a little remembrance just so I don't forget, you know, just a little bit. But I'm so glad that God can take something that might look hopeless, that might look like it's going to destroy you, that might look like it's just going to be the end, and he can take it, then the great physician can come through, and he can filter that blood, and he can start healing it and making it better. And then the other part of your blood that protects you is your red blood cells. You know what your red blood cells This right here, I like this right here. Because you know what? There's some people out there that'll say that, you, that once you've been saved that you can lose it. But I'm so glad that once I've been saved, it's here for me forever. I'm never going to lose it. It's never going anywhere. But you know what the red blood cells do? When somebody cuts you, they start clotting up. So they can't get it out. So just like God, when somebody, when the Bring devil throws a little fiery dart at me, and it might cut me a little bit, and I might start bleeding yeah. a little bit, I think I'm in trouble. God will just clock that up. He'll make a scab on it. He'll make it better. Yes. If you'll just trust him tonight, then when those little darts start hitting you from the devil tonight, if you'll just trust in God, he'll let those red blood cells start clotting that blood up, and he'll keep it in. Because you know what? He's going to protect you. There's no cut too deep. There's no cut too deep that God can't heal tonight. Right. We try to limit God, but God is unlimited. You know, we try to put this God in this box, but God's much bigger than anything we ever thought we could have. You know what? We just can't understand it. We can't fathom it. It doesn't make any sense to us. But God is bigger. You know, we only see the world. We can only see what's around us. But then we got the whole earth. He controls the whole earth. But more than that, you look up in the sky. You got the stars up there. He spoke that into existence just like that. He's got the whole universe in his hands. He's got the whole everything in his hands. And you don't think that he can fix a little bitty problem in your life tonight? And we get so scared. We put more trust in the church pew to hold us up than we do in God to take care of the small things in our life. When we sit down, we expect that chair to hold us up. But why can't we sit down on God tonight and just say, Lord, I know you got me. Let me just sit down and put my trust in you. We trust the pew more than we trust God tonight. But if you'll just let yourself, let let go just a little bit. Trust me, I'm learning. Buddy, I am learning every day because God came to me with something that, that's really so trivial and so simple. That I was so scared. I had the death grip on it, trying to hold on to it. And I just turned it loose. And it amazed me what God did just like that. I mean, it wasn't even a day. And he, he changed my whole way of thinking about things. Because as soon as I let it go, it changed just like that. And tonight, if you'll just let go of those little right. things that keep holding us back, you know, that sin that Paul spoke about that so easily besets us. They sing a song, when I lay my Isaac down, you know, just like Abraham, when he had to be willing to sacrifice his son because God knew that that was precious to him. That little thing that we hold so dear that we think is so important, if we'll just trust God with it, he'll take care of it. I, I love the Lord tonight. And uh, the other thing <clears throat> that I want to talk about is the, the, what the blood can do. And this is really important. It's transporting things through your body. So we breathe in our lungs, right? And we get oxygen. And if we didn't have blood, that oxygen would just sit there. It wouldn't go anywhere. But it, but our blood carries the oxygen to all our cells in our body. And more than that, after the oxygen's taken, you got carbon dioxide that has to get out, right? So we got things coming in, we got things going out. We got things coming in, we got things going out. Just like this woman with the issue of blood, when God made her whole, I'm so glad 
that when they crucified my Lord on the cross and they buried him and he went and he went down and he died for us and he died for us. He shed his blood, the blood that saves everything. The only blood is said in one place without the shedding of blood. There is no remission of sin. I'm so thankful back in the Old Testament under the law, they tried to sacrifice animals, but it only lasted for a certain amount of time. But now we got the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus came to this earth and he died and he sacrificed himself for us. He died on the cross and now he's ascended to the father and he sits on the right hand of God making intercessions for me and you every day. So let me tell you tonight, just like that blood transports things around our body, we got God up there right now so that we can come to him. Just so, and they couldn't do this before. You just don't understand. We were hopeless. We were out of hope in the world. But now you can make a cry out unto God. And we got Jesus at the right hand of the Father. And he's talking to God for us. You know what? I got Wendell over here. He needs a hand, Lord. What are you going to send him? What are you going to do for him? He sent me the comforter. Said he is always with me. So God's always bringing the good stuff down. And he's helping me get the bad stuff out. If you, can you see it tonight? Can you see what the blood does for us? Just like our blood in our body. It carries out huge, so important things. So that we can communicate and be one with God. <coughs> we were watching a movie the other day. And this boy was drowning. And I think a lot of times, you know, getting in the water and drowning. And the father was so upset. He went running to his boy and he got him out of the water and he had swallowed all this water and he couldn't breathe. And he's sitting there pumping on his chest. And I think about people tonight that are in this world, that are in this church, but people out there outside this church. Who are we talking to tonight? Who are we telling about Jesus? Are we just keeping it in here? Are we taking it out there? But T people tonight, so many people are choking on the world, choking on things that are in their lives. I got a burden for that, Frankie, because I, I feel so much of my life, that's what holds me back, is not having trust and, and letting the world just in a little bit to where it starts choking you. And just like that man, I thank God that he started pumping on my chest, trying to get me to spit that water out. And just when they thought there was no hope left, he spit the water out and he started breathing again. Tonight, when it feels like there's nothing left and it feels like there's no hope and it feels like we just can't, you know, we, we get so bogged down with what this one and that one's doing and thinking and, you know, that one's over there doing that. Can you believe so-and-so did that? Can you believe this one went over there to the bar? Can you believe this one hangs out with those type of people? But you know what? It says in one place, we wrestle not against flesh, flesh and blood. We try to look at flesh and blood. We look at people. You're my brother. You're my brother. You're my sister. You're my brother. It's not you that I wrestle against. We love. We should love one another. It's not that. It's the principalities. It's the devil blinding us and making us see things for what they're not. And we get blinded because we think, well, I mean, what's worse, telling a lie or murdering somebody in the eyes of God? Which one's worse? Are they the same? Sure, there's different consequences in this world because sin has consequences. But what can God do? Can he not forgive anything tonight? I love you, Frankie. I appreciate you. And I just worry tonight that, uh, that without the blood, without the healing blood of Jesus in our life, if we would just trust in God and let the blood flow and let that, just let it, run within us and do the things that it's supposed to do that, you know, God would just be able to do so much for us. He'd be able to heal us. He'd be able to lift us up. He can save your soul. Aye. He can do everything for you. And I love you tonight and I appreciate you. Brother. Aye. It's all yours. While we get a song, but when it comes out front. Brother Wendell has made clear how precious the blood is of Jesus Christ. Amen. You need a touch tonight. You need a touch from God. Hey, I, I'm telling you, next week we don't know what it'll hold. But I want to make sure that in the morning, tonight, I want to make sure I started with God. 
when I get up in the morning, God allows me to get up. I want to make sure that I start my week with God. Right there. And while we stand, Brother Wendell comes out front. Hey, do you need something from God tonight? That little woman found out she did, and she went and got it. Why are we so? Are you looking for a place to worship God in spirit and in truth? Hello, I'm Frankie Green, pastor of Trinity Baptist Church in Auburn, Georgia. We would like to invite you to be in our service with us. Sunday school starts at 10 with morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship begins at 6 and Wednesday night prayer service at 7. We are a King James Bible-believing, fundamental, independent Baptist church reaching out to those who need a special touch from God. For more information, you can visit us at TrinityBaptistAuburn.com or on Facebook at Trinity Baptist Church Auburn. We welcome you to Trinity Baptist Church where you will become part of a family.